Well, early morning start. It's 3 a.m. and we're heading out because there's supposed to be thunderstorms kicking up by about 10 in the morning. So we're gonna try to get out there, get maybe three or four hours of fishing in. south of Hopedale in Lake Robin and beyond are one of my favorite late spring early summer locations to find trout. I really like fishing around islands hitting the points and the quietness that they bring but wow today it was rough fishing out there it was literally rough but the fishing was really tough and we eventually did finally get a fish on the line. Hardhead. Whoa! That's what do you digger. got there? That is a big Goodness, gaff top? Yep. Hardhead. Lucky me. <laughs> you want a flyers? Yeah, so okay, well, we haven't. No, we we found them. We're getting better, though. Yeah. Hardhead is. At least a sign of life. Oh, there the fish trout. Good. That's a good pull. Yeah, he's not huge, but that is the first trout. That's a keeper. That's a keeper. Finally caught a fish. We have been looking today. We went out to the islands to start with. And it just seems like the fish were blown off. It was really rough out there. I guess that was a bad choice because we had those strong winds all week from the southeast. There wasn't any bait, there wasn't any fish, any birds. There was nothing on those islands out in Lake Robin. So we finally come in to the protected marsh, and there we have it. Ah, the life of a fishing guide. Actually, I pulled that down on myself, so I can't blame Tom for that one. So Tom caught that one right on the shoreline. We got a windblown shoreline. The trout was right up on the, on the grass. So eventually our trial and error paid off and we found that the fish were holding against windblown shorelines mostly in small ponds and typically that means that the bait gets pushed up against the shoreline and so we began to work those kind of shorelines just drifting them with the drift sock deployed and we started to find fish two foot of water There we go. Got a nice one. Oh, yeah. Well, there we go. That's a nice shake, too. There you go, Mr. Bill. A little. Looks like about a 12 and a half. Yeah, probably. Close to 12. Switch to a gulp shrimp. Gray one. We tried a variety of baits. I tried a jerk bait. And we threw swim baits on the bottom, but we ended up finding that the most productive bait for the day in this wind and these conditions was a popping cork with a lead head and swim bait on it, about a two foot leader. Mostly we fished with matrix shad, probably lemon head caught the most fish. I've got a fish. I have got a nice fish, whatever it is. This could be a red fish. Yep, that's a red. Now, 
No, it's not that big. Wow, that guy ate. He ate the whole thing. He ate the whole thing down. So, got that 17-inch redfish on the gulp shrimp again. Our old faithful point pattern was a bust today. Caught no fish on points. Catching fish on the wind-blown shoreline of a pond. It's been a different kind of day. We're really curious about why the fish didn't identify with points today. We've been very successful this whole year fishing points, but not today. Now one big difference was that the points were flooded and the, the water was up in the grass on the points and so I know that the, the structure of the bottom would be deeper and so maybe there wasn't the turbulence that uh, is typically on a point when water flows across it. But I don't really know and if you have any idea about why that would be, why they wouldn't identify with points on a day like today. I'd love to hear your ideas. And this is a shallow pond. This is a pond is at the most two and a half feet. 2.3. And we're fishing about two to two and a half foot. It's a shallow pond. It's not full of a lot of fish, but there are a few in here. It's always a good practice. Feel your line. This line Probably can't see it, but when I run my finger on there, it is chewed up. I feel a lot of uh, sharp edges. And redfish. And my red, yeah, redfish or trout has done that. So get a big fish on there and snap right off. Is this what we're looking for? Anything? Sign of life? Birds feeding here? Right on the point. Maybe our point curse will end here. So here are the here are the birds working off this point. One there and one, one over there. there. So we're just talking about how the diving birds was bust because there are dead fish in the water. Right there. Is it a croaker or what? Like small fish that somebody threw out, I guess. And the seagulls are trying to, looks like a croaker. Yeah. Yeah. There's some, I guess they're too large for the gulls. So they keep going down, picking them up, and then dropping them. But there were no fish under that. Oh, fish. Ah. Uh, bass. Oh, there we go. We got a little bass on the X wrap. Yep. X wrap. So this thing was so successful in clean water before. The only clean water we've seen is in this dead end canal, and I don't think there's any trout in here. There was that little bass, so kind of hard to tell this thing got a fair shake or not but didn't do well today and it was a tough day it was really hard to find trout we finally found a pattern for them which was against windblown shorelines and we were we were able to catch some fish that way but the islands were a bust probably shouldn't have gone out there right away like, like we did I guess the three days of hard southeast winds must have blown the fish off the island. It felt like the fish had been just swept right off. Somebody came in with a broom. If we always catch little ones on those islands. Just the islands in Lake Robin always have throwbacks at least. There weren't even any throwbacks. It was just dead. So... We found, we figured out something. I just don't think that there were a lot of trout in the marsh where we were, where we did find, we patterned some. So I'll put up a couple more videos when we did better in the marsh, maybe in the Hopedale area. 
and uh, hit the subscribe if you want to get a notice of when I upload and I hope to see you out in the water sometime hope you're able to get out and fish